With Apple's new 2017 iPhones comes a new recording format for photos and videos called high efficiency. And with this high efficiency format comes a couple of new issues. First and foremost, and one that you're probably experiencing without having any idea that you're experiencing it, is that when high efficiency is turned on, there's also a setting turned on by default within the photos settings that makes it so anytime you transfer or send photos or videos, a conversion takes place to convert them from high efficiency video or photo files to most compatible photo or video files before the transfer or send takes place. This means that anytime you're transferring or sending files, an extra step is taking place that is not only increasing your file size in the final destination, but it's also taking more time to do so. The second issue that this brings up is that whenever you transfer the original photos and videos, that your computer is most likely not compatible with these formats. If you transfer the high efficiency photos and videos into any computer that's not Mac OS High Sierra, you will not be able to view the images or play back the videos without converting them anyways. The other thing that this brings up is that if you use your phone to make videos and edit in anything other than Premiere, you won't be able to use the original files from your iPhone in the video editor. And within Premiere, you have to take an extra step to change the file extension for them to even work there. So Apple's probably right in turning on this automatic setting that makes it so the conversion takes place. But if you're a hardcore video editor or you create content on a daily basis like I do, you don't want that extra space taken up by the converted files whenever you can just change a file extension and work with it in your editor that way. So later on in this video, I'm going to be talking about a way to do that with more than one file at a time. But before we do that, let's jump into the settings and see what this high efficiency format is all about. So we're going to click settings and we're going to scroll way down to the camera settings. And then we're going to go to the sixth option down and we're going to click formats. And we're going to see that there's two different options available, high efficiency and most compatible. And underneath that, there's a paragraph to explain that with high efficiency, it reduces the file size and allows you to record 4K 60 frames per second and 1080p 240 frames per second. But what these camera settings don't tell us is that anytime you go to transfer these photos and videos to your computer via the Photos app or Image Capture, or you go to send them in any way, a conversion takes place to convert them from that high efficiency format back to the most compatible format before they're transferred or sent. To find this, we've got to go backwards in the settings and go into the photo settings, scroll all the way to the bottom and find transfer to Mac or PC. Underneath that, we see that we have two options, automatic and keep originals. Under that, we can read that it says automatically transfer photos and videos in a compatible format or always transfer the original file without checking for compatibility. To illustrate this difference, we're going to plug the phone into the computer and open image capture with the different options selected. So first we're going to do the automatic option. We're going to plug the phone into the computer here and under image capture, we're going to wait for it to come up and register the device. And now that it's registered, we see that the second option down here, the image 2656 says under kind that it's a JPEG image. And if we unplug the phone, Go back to the settings, then select Keep Originals, then plug the phone back in, let Image Capture register the device again, and look at the second image down, we'll see that under Kind it says H-E-I-C. So clearly there's two different things going on whenever Automatic and Keep Originals are selected. Under Automatic it's converting these files, and I've noticed that whenever Automatic is selected, the image transfer from image capture to my computer takes absolutely forever and before I didn't know why but now I know that it's because it's converting every single file from this HEVC video format to a normal H.264 format. And to prove that what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to find the first 4K image file and we're going to open up this iPhone 8 HEVC format folder that I made on the desktop and we're going to drag the very first 4k video file in. Once it's transferred 
we're going to give it a new name in order to know which one's which, and we're going to make this one say keep originals. Okay, so now that we have the keep originals version of this video in the folder, let's unplug the iPhone, change back to automatic in the settings, plug the iPhone back in, wait for image capture to register the iPhone once again, and then we're going to scroll down and find the same file, 2635, and we're going to drag it into the folder, and we're going to watch that it's doing something here. It's taking much longer than it did before, and that's because there's a conversion happening before it transfers into the folder. See that it's taking who knows how many times longer, but it's taking a lot longer for this file to transfer. And now that it's converted and transferred, we're going to get to the main point of the video, and that is that the Keep Originals version of this video file will not import into Premiere without the file extension being changed from .mov to .mp4. And to illustrate that, we're going to open up Premiere here, and we're going to delete these old files from a different project that I tried this with, and we're going to try to bring these files in individually. First, we're going to do the converted version from the automatic file setting for transfer to Mac or PC on the iPhone. We're going to drag it in, and once it imports, you'll see that it did import. We can play through it. There's a video there. Now we can try it with the Keep Originals version, and we'll see that it says codec missing or unavailable. So clearly something weird's going on here, and natively it won't just go in, but if you change the format to .mp4, hit enter, and then push use .mp4, and then drag it in, we'll see that it works, and the same video file is there. One other thing we can check is file size. So we'll click get info, We'll see that 69.8 megabytes for the Keep Originals version and 153.5 megabytes for the automatic version. So clearly there's a conversion going on. We'll have to do some testing to see if there's any differences in quality, but either way though, there's something going on here. And if you make videos regularly on your iPhone and you need to edit them in Premiere and you don't want to wait for this file conversion to happen every single time you go to transfer your video files, there's something that we can do about that, and that is batch changing the file extension within Mac OS X itself. And it's extremely easy to do this. All we have to do is go into the Automator app, which is built into OS X, and we're going to choose a file type or choose a type for your document. We're going to want to pick application. We click choose, and if we look here, it's a pretty intimidating user interface, but what we're doing is very simple in that we're picking files and folders, which is the fifth option down, and then we're going to pick the very first option in the list that it brings up and drag it over to the right, which is ask for finder items. We're going to make sure it says start at desktop, and then we're going to check the allow multiple selection. This is what's going to allow you to batch change the extensions on your files. Then from here, we're going to go down and find rename finder items. It's about three fourths of the way down. We're going to drag that over to the right and a dialog box is going to come up that says this action will change the names of the finder items passed into it. Would you like to add a copy finder items action so that copies are changed and your originals are preserved? I don't need this because I would like to just change all of the extensions in order to edit them in Premiere, so I'm going to push don't add. Then from here we're going to find the add date or time drop down box. We're going to go down and click add text. And then we're going to find the after name drop down box and we're going to click as extension and we're going to add where it says this text and put dot mp4. Now basically what we did here is create an application that allows you to open up Finder and select multiple files in order to change their extension from whatever it is to dot mp4 rather than doing it manually like we would have to do otherwise. So we can go to save. I'm going to save this on my desktop and I'm going to title it MP4 conversion. 
We're going to push save. It shows up on the desktop here and that's all you have to do. You can quit Automator and it's going to automatically bring up the application that we made. I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to bring image capture back up so that we can get an original file again. As you can see the HEIC under kind for that first picture that we showed. And what we're going to do is pick two different 4K video files and then we're going to bring them into the iPhone 8 HEVC folder in a new folder called convert. And we can see these files are bigger than the original file that we converted when it was set to automatic and how much faster it's going with two files that are way bigger. So now we've got these guys in here under convert. If we bring up Premiere, we'll show that they won't be imported because the codec is missing or unavailable. So we take our conversion application that we made, we find our folder, you will find it wherever you put it, and then you select it. There's our convert folder. Here's our two files that we just put in and we click choose and you can see how fast it happened there. Now it didn't get rid of the .mov because I have the show file extension option picked in Finder, but if we open Premiere back up and we drag these in, we'll see that they come in no problem and we can watch them, edit them, do whatever we need to with these files. I didn't find anything else on the internet about this yet, so hopefully you can find this useful. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. It's pretty simple to make your own applications this way, and if you explore Automator more, you'll probably find more that you can do with it. So I hope somebody found this useful. Thanks for watching, and subscribe to my channel if you want some more stuff like this. I usually post BMX videos, but if there's tech stuff that I find, I'll post that too. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.